Ring ring. <laughs> Can you do a brr brr? Hello? Well, you tell Malcolm I'm very, very, very busy. I haven't got all day to wait for him. Okay, thank you. I'll expect a call back. Well, hello, I'm Croeso Noli Howard in the garage. In speciality, Heddio. Say that to bed. Well, I say thy dean pith, Denian Cumbria. Go on, mini weld. Put any get your finger. Yes, I'm saying grand, eh? A little idiot is posh. Yes, I can both. Boss! He's not here. He's not here. Where is he? Get out. Oh, meet him on luck. Shoot. Hello. Ah, <laughs> finally. <laughs> hey. The head of M Sport, Malcolm Wilson. <laughs> How are you doing, man? I'm all right. How are you? Good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. What a fantastic beginning of the season you've had. What a fantastic Monte Carlo. Unbelievable. In fairness, though, special. <coughs> yeah, it was, I have to say. Must be up there. One of them real special yeah. ones. I could see in that interview at the end of the rally, the old tears were starting to come. I must admit, I got quite emotional quite a few times, to be honest. Just uh, when he did his first fastest time, I mean, you can imagine him doing his first fastest time, first fastest time for the new car, and then uh, to take the lead on Friday on, was it stage five? And, of course, we had all the staff here. We had a live stream into the into workshops, so they were watching when he actually took the lead as well. So, yeah, I, there was a lot of emotional moments, and then obviously you can imagine on the final stage, it's just... But it all started, what, how long ago? 12 months ago? No, it's been, it was really, it's, it's, it's been a two-year project. Has it? Yeah. It's been a learning curve for, for everybody because there's so much new technology. You know, it's the first time in the history of WRC we're not using a production-based body shell. So we start with a tubular steel frame, so that was all new new technology for us it's something we've never done before then of course the hybrid which is the the real big aspect to the whole the whole thing so um but then having said that i have to say once i saw the car performing um i knew we are we had a fantastic car you knew this uh, it'll end last year late late last year that you had the car what stage in the game did you think right i gotta get the the best driver in the world and that was a difficult choice at the end of the day because you already worked with those here. You had some good guys yourself here already signed up for next for this year. Where did Lowe come into the equation? I mean, it is something that we've been talking about for uh, literally the last six months of last year and trying to sort of pull things together. But we knew that uh, Sebastian had a pretty intense programme with his World Cross Country and Extreme E. But of course, we got him to drive the car around the middle of the year just to see, to get his thoughts. We couldn't get him out of the car. He just wanted to drive and he, he felt so comfortable and so so happy in the car. So that then obviously then put a bit more pressure on us to try and find a, a way to get him to do some rallies with. From the moment he started the very first stage till he finished the rally, he didn't make one setup change. So, you know, all these young drivers, guys, I'm sorry, but yeah. we've just won Monte Carlo yeah. with a guy who never changed the damper click, never changed the spring rate, never changed the roll bar setting, never altered the ride height from start to finish. It and how many days testing? Day and a half. Two, a day and a half testing. That's incredible, isn't it, in fairness? How many people want to buy these cars now? What, 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 what kind of effect does it have on the, on the business? Because it's massive, isn't it? It is massive, and to be honest, we, uh, as you know, we need the, the commercial sales to sustain our level at the, at, in the WRC, so... It's crucial to us. I mean, uh, we were really hit heavily with the 2017 car. I mean, uh, they still hold a very fond place in my heart as a 17 but car. But you didn't sell any. But you we didn't sell get the uptake um, <clears throat> that we'd had previously. You know, we always sold between eight and 14 WRC cars a year. Well, in the five years of that car, we only, we've only ever built uh, 13. Mm. So it had a big impact on our business case, but uh, there's certainly a lot more interest in this car. And um, already we've got, uh, we've got orders for two. And, uh, you know, we will be making some more announcements shortly. We will be running some more programmes as well. And does hybrid make it easier for you now in this new sort of sustainable world we're in? Is that better for you? Is hybrid the, is the, hybrid the buzzword? 
Uh, it's for sure. I mean, the sport needed to do something, and I, what a great platform WRC to to introduce the hybrid side of it. Uh, and I think, to be honest, I think it's only the start. I mean, okay, we've got this car for the for the next three years, but um, is, that, is that long enough? For, do you think, or do you think it needs to be longer to bring more manufacturers in? Because three years isn't the long time to. To, for a new manufacturer to come in to make it attractive. No, uh, you're right because I mean, uh, you know, it, I mean, uh, obviously Mohammed's the new presence yes. made it a very clear uh, statement that he wants to get more manufacturers involved. And to be honest, yes, you need two years to develop a car. So if you think about it, there's no manufacturers probably going to make the investment now uh, for just have one more year left to run the car. So I think what will happen is that uh, we, we're speaking with them as well, with the FIA at the minute, about extending for another two and years. And you, you've got some strength in the FIA for once. It's not the French international assistance anymore, is it? You've got <laughs> Ben Salem, who you run for years. You've got uh, Andrew Wheatley, who worked here. You've got Robert Reed, who's just across the border. So if you can't do it now, you'll never do it, Malcolm. No, I think it's fantastic. You can imagine it's it's great for us to see that um, that it's a real rally man at the top of the of the FIA, um, and I think you know he's made it very clear to me for the next three months he does need to concentrate on Formula One, but um, I'm sure you know he's again he's give a clear directive that he wants to see more manufacturers in in WRC, and I'm sure he will fight to do that. It's got to be good for everybody, isn't it? Yeah, because um, the sport deserves it. Yeah, I mean, the lift for M Sport must be fantastic. I'd like to go and have a look around the workshop now, and possibly if we could have a look at the car. I don't know how you feel about that. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, you know, it'd be nice to have a look around and have a little bit of special access shown around by the boss. Like, um, <laughs> how are you feeling about that? I'll take you down, Howard. Oh, I'll fantastic. be very happy to show you the Thank car, you very honest. much. And look, here's M Sport Heritage here, <laughs> or Migsy. <laughs> they found him in that car 12 years after he built it. <laughs> R5, R5. This is Rally 2 car, yeah, which is going to a customer. So I think we're on, we built nearly 300 of the Mark 1 Fiesta. 300 of you. And then this is, I think this, we're up to 70 something. And, that uh, new, the <clears> Mark 2 <throat> one now, is a lovely little car. I had a. This one's chassis 78. I looked at um, the car you'd uh, sold to Birdie. Oh, yes. For his yeah. son. That was a lovely yeah. little car. Yeah. Lovely That's little the car. same as this. And he did, he drove exceptionally well on that rally. Fair play to him. But the car's, it's, it's sorted now, isn't it? All those little Yeah, we have, a bit of, and... we have a bit of work still to do on uh, on the gravel, but certainly on tarmac, we know that. So Shell, Shell 70. That's 78. 78. But you, you're in 300 somewhere for R5. For the, for the Mark 1 right. version. Right, right, <clears throat> OK. So this is Mark 2. two and we're up to 78. OK. Um, these cars are going... One That's a recce car, I assume. That's what you're using to yeah. recce at the moment. Uh, yeah, the, the lead guys are using Focus RS recce cars. And this was last two-year project, the Bentley's fantastic um, yeah, project I mean, that it was. Yeah, it's a great project. Sadly, it's, um, we've still got customer cars. But we're not actually running an official what, um, Bentley How race much run. would I have to, how uh, many bags of sugar would I need to buy one of these? Uh, a new one's about 380,000. 380,000. What about servicing costs? Are they massive to, to service or are they relatively. Mm, I would have to say mechanically not so bad. The, the problem is if, if you have an accident because the whole body's carbon. Yes. It, to be honest, it's a bit now like the new rally cars. If you it's have gonna, an accident. It's going to change the whole thing. It's a, it's a big. Uh, and who races these and where are these race then? In, Le Mans um, kind of races no, and 24 hour races? No, there's... Well, endurance yeah, racing? Yeah, there'll be, there'll be probably some running in Spa this year in Spa 24 hours. But they're GT3 cars. GT3. And these now, we get into um, 2017. So this, is, this is the last um, of, the, of the 17 cars. Right. We've only got three left, to be honest. They've, they've been sold on so a lot. A lot have been sold on. Um, so, yeah, we've got three, three left. <clears throat> and here we start with the new generation. So this is the... And... Luckily for us now, There's this is the future. This is the future. So what's in there then? How do it so, all work? You're asking the wrong person. Come on, Howard. Well, where, where goes what then? <laughs> drive shaft comes through the middle, obviously. There's, yeah. a, there's so a drive out to there, isn't there? Yeah, so this, this drive comes out of here. So yeah. you've got an electric motor, you've got yes. your battery. That's so all in there. Everything, the hybrid unit, everything is condensed into that unit. Right. Apart from, obviously, things like your cooling. Yeah. Your, you know, that's, this is all additional when you see on What's the car. What's those two coolers? They're the, for the uh, for the cooling. Don't touch it. 
of the cooling system. Like a shock. Um, so this is in a ballistic box, yes. <clears throat> which has been tested to 70G. Yes. Uh, you saw on Adrian's car after his big crash, yes. I think it encountered something like 36G impact. 36G. Of course, the green lights came on, yes. so it was still safe. So, uh, so after the, the drive comes out of that spline there. And that goes directly into the rear diff. Into the rear diff. diff yeah. I see, I see, I see. And then the drive shaft from the front comes through the back to the rear diff as well. Then. Yeah, so, yeah, because now you've got a solid centre diff, yes. so it, you could put the drive in the front of the or the back, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. So. And this is a purchased item, yes. a sealed item. Yes. Everybody has the same one. Everybody has Toyota, the same. Toyota, Hyundai, they'll all look the same. same. Yeah. Obviously, the, um, the bit that nobody wants to give away is how you've got your strategy, your maps. Yes. You're allowed three yes. different maps. And have you developed that then, or is that, is yeah, that no. how have you developed that? Is that That's... sitting down with the engineers, looking at the route, looking at the rallies, looking at... It's working with the drivers, with the, drivers. With the engineers. Um, and as I say, using some of the rigs, doing some of the how modern. did how did Loeb know what to do with the little experience of the car? Then where did he? How I'd, did I'd he... Like, I think I'd like to say that it's a positive thing that we've done. That we've done all the work, we've done all the testing. Did you we've take this to America to the wind tunnel and yeah. do all your development well, testing? This there? Thing, but we've we've had this on a rig, should we say? In, right. In the... Now you spoke briefly about the car, and you said that the inside of the car is a. It's not a shell, it's not a... This doesn't start life as a Fiesta or a Puma, sorry. It starts life as a space frame. As a space frame. Now, is that... Is that space frame the same for everybody? Or is this a unique Puma space frame? And is there a Toyota? <coughs> no, no, uh, they're... They're all modelled on the same design. For instance, right. the driver's got to sit between... Right. So, we've probably all got different positions where we have our B-pillar. So it's pillar. not the same space frame, but you're given a parameter to We're work with We're given a parameter work, right, to okay. work with. All this design of this safety cell has been done by the FIA and the has done an incredible job, the safety team there. They've done, obviously, crash testing on previous models. Yeah. Um, hence why we've come up with this structure where the driver is now sat between these two bars. You can see we've moved the crews closer together. Uh, you've got all this big side impacts, that's the thing that every driver yeah, yeah, for uses yeah. the side impact. Yeah. Um, I mean, years ago, you had the seat up against the cage, so once this went in, it hit, it impacted on the on the co-driver, yeah, didn't it? and then, I mean, obviously, there's been lots of development and lots of crash testing done on the seat frames, the seats themselves. Any now, this aerodynamics is... This is cooling for the hybrid system. Yeah. What's this for, then? That's uh, brake cooling. Brake cooling. Yeah. And we have no engine. Obviously, engines are getting rebuilt, ready for Sweden. Well, not rebuilt because we're now only allowed to have two engines for the season. So you can just uh, health check them. So they've just basically been health checked. Um, and obviously, with it being his first rally, we need to look at everything to try and find out if we've missed something in the testing, if you know, something's chafing, something's rubbing on something. So we need to do a, a real I'm Looking at the can, that's all fiberglass, whereas that would have been a steel part of the bodywork before. Previously, yes. Now, with this is all the framework, is, yeah. it's completely different, isn't it? And of course, the one thing that we don't know is. You know, I told the guys in Monty, look, if you get a puncture, please, you're going to have to accept and either, you know, decide to stop and change it or whatever you do, don't let the tyre start to flare. Because you don't want this stuff ripping because off. to be and... honest, if, if you start to do that, then you will just not be able to repair the car. So, so it's going to happen throughout the year. From a, this, from, a, you know, from a super rally point of view nowadays, it's going to be more difficult to, to repair these cars yes. Um, I think, personally, I think any accident now is going to be very, very difficult to repair them. Yeah. You, so you're not going to get the Rally 2 situation. And I guess, ultimately, you probably haven't got a load of spares, have you? Uh, you know, we, we have enough sense. We, we will have everything with us. You would honest. have to. We would to. have, but to be honest, I just think it's not going to be feasible. It's not going to be possible and feasible. For you, where is the biggest technological breakthrough come with these cars, then, do you think? Uh, the biggest technical thing is obviously how you deploy the hybrid and how you get the best out of it. And, and have you had to take on special people to analyse that then, or have you had...? Uh, no, we, we've obviously used the resource that we had in the US, okay. but to be honest, it's a lot of my guys. I mean, we've, you know, some of the guys that were on the Bentley side have right. moved across. Right. Uh, a bit like when we took on the Bentley thing, some of the rally yes. guys moved across the yes. Bentley, yes. so now we've, we've done a, an about change again. And obviously you had that um, that Jaguar um, electric, electric series. series. Was that as was that hybrid or electric? No, that was a hundred percent electric. So, so you've yeah. got a little bit of experience there, haven't you? So yeah. it's uh, I suppose things have worked pretty well uh, from there. Like, yeah, fantastic carbon. This is all, all carbon. The only part that's 
the again it's part of the regulation. This part above a uh, crew yeah. has to be steel. Right. So, so you this have to is blend that into. Yeah, and then so from here it's carbon. Yeah. But this bit. Hence why you've not taken the decklin off because yeah. stripped it. Yeah. Suspension travel is less than last year. Slightly less. Yeah. Um, um, front and rear? Front and rear, slightly less, but... Uh, and is the front suspension changeable with the rear suspension? No. Is there, is there, uh, it's... The hubs, the actual yeah. bearing carrier and everything is, uh, is interchangeable. So that but keeps costs down again? Yeah, helps to... Uh... Fantastic. This is special. These boys so, are working. Yeah, this is, <clears throat> this is Craig's car for uh, Sweden. And then you've got uh, uh, Gus's car. Gus Greensmith! Yahoo! Give us the fastest time... Uh, what did you do? Give us the, the big story when you had the fastest time. I think it was just kind of some kind of weird was hand movement Tourette's when it happened. How did you go happened. like that? Do it again. It was more like a... <laughs> Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's um, a wonderful achievement in fairness and uh, fair play. Um, obviously, the pace was good, um, but the car was good too. Like, And, and you looked and you, you seemed like you were in a good place all the way through Monte Carlo. Yeah, Tell I'm, us a little bit about I your... I didn't really have too much time in the car. I, I did a, quite a few more days on gravel than I did. I only did half a day on tarmac in the whole time of testing. So compared to Adrian and Craig, I'd barely done anything on, uh, on tarmac. But I had a good amount of time in the car to understand the basics on gravel. And then we did a half day test in November and straight away the car felt relatively comfortable. No, no real issues, no, just, just felt okay. And then we went to the test in, in Monty and then started to push the car more. I think began to realise how good the car actually was. Uh, just so predictable and, and just absolutely no hassle to drive whatsoever and just inspired uh, me to drive quicker and quicker. And I think that was the biggest difference between this car and the old car. The old car was just unpredictable in what it was going to do and it was very hard to manage throughout a rally. The, the, um, the big talk prior to the, the Monte Carlo was the fact that, you know, you had the, the active gearbox taken away and then you had a fixed transmission and you had this 100 horsepower come in and everybody was on about the fact that the cars would be more difficult to drive, but it doesn't appear to have been the case in Monte. No, I think uh, one of the other things that played a part as well is obviously um, M Sport and Full Performance put all the resources into this new car. So for the two years before, the Fiesta hadn't been developed really. Uh, so I think it had just uh, fallen behind a bit, uh, but we knew that everyone had the faith and belief that it was the right thing to do to put all the effort into this car. And it turned out to be a lot, lot better than the Fiesta, and I think quicker. Some people, some drivers have said that that extra 100 horsepower makes up for a lot of the inefficiencies that you, you had maybe in previous cars. You know, you, you get all that power and you've got to sort of manage it and handle it. Uh, it's, it's a nice addition. You know when you've got the 100 horsepower, that's for sure. But uh, to be honest, uh, I, don't, I can't speak for any of the guys at Toyota and Hyundai, but for me, I, I can't really think of anything where this car lacks compared to the old ones. So I think that just is a testament to the job that uh, the guys and girls have here have done. But how complicated was the uh, distribution of the hybrid? Because you've got these three maps and you've got these, this, you, you can have it at the start. And do you manage it yourself or does the team manage it for you? Or is it a, a switch you switch on and switch off? Or? Well, you're given the amount of kilojoules that you can, that you can use for, uh, for each stage. Uh, a lot of it depends on the, the length of the stage. Uh, so generally the shorter the stage is, the more power we have available. Uh, which, but that's the same for everybody. And then the maps, the teams uh, set themselves and they have the, the three maps um, uh, put into the car. And then basically how you manage it throughout the stage is a lot down to the, the driver. Whereas in tarmac rallies, it's not very difficult because every single braking usually regenerates the, the energy that you've lost and you can deploy it again straight away. So in tarmac rallies, we're using the hybrid a lot more than we will say in Sweden at the X rally where hybrid management for me will be a lot more important to the ultimate time. Did you run out of hybrid on a stage because it was the length of a stage at all no, on the rally. No, my engineers are pretty good, so I so didn't run out. How do they know that? Is, are they t talking to the car during the stage then? No, it's just more the fact that we, they have the, obviously the engineers recce, so they're able to have a look it's at the stage. before each so stage. So they're, they're able to study right. what they think, they, or estimate what the usage of the hybrid And if you've got a, like at the end of the stage, you've got, you've got seven k's flat and you've got seven k's uphill, seven k's down. Can you save the hybrid power for the uphill section? Are you able uh, to do yeah, that? Yeah, you can. Like there was a few places in, in Monty I had marked uh, there was a couple of places actually on the stage that we that we won that I had marked as places to be thinking about saving the hybrid and there was one corner where I would give away half a second by going down a gear but then would gen go over the critical point to generate the hybrid and then I would gain almost a second by the end. And of is that the something day. that you were putting in your pace notes then? Uh, there was little cues in the notes. Uh, yeah, help, but yeah. Uh, there's 
To be fair, it's so hard to predict exactly how much right. you have. It's more of just a cue if you can do it, but if you can't, then it's not a big issue. Um, where will the hybrid come into its own? Which rallies will be hybrid plus rallies and which rallies will be sort of hybrid negative? Uh, so, for sure, every time at Rally yeah. um, is a big plus for the hybrids just because you can generate so much energy underneath, underneath braking that you can recoup and regenerate the energy that you need to have a, the next boost. Uh, whereas in the rallies like uh, Sweden... What about Sweden? Is that is it going to be, be a tricky one? But it will also be... Uh, there will also be, I think, more time to be gained and lost by not uh, using your hybrid you as efficiently as possible. You know, in Sweden, it's so, so slippery in places and you just, you just, you just feather in the car through and just... just you know, it's so slippery. Will the will that extra horsepower be a disadvantage there? And you know, when, you know, when you've got a powerful car in the snow, it doesn't matter, does it? Because you don't want to be going fast. You want to be maximising the grip. Well, I suppose it, it depends on how um, how each team has set up the way to use their hybrids. This is um, where the secret comes in. Yeah, each and, team has a different. Yeah, and you, you're trying to manage it as efficiently as as possible because you don't want to give away that extra that, that extra energy. As and, well. and where are you doing that? Are you doing that here in the workshop now, or are you doing that in? Are you having meetings with with your engineers, or is that done prior to the rally, or is it done after the recce? Or... Yeah, I mean, it, it's still it's still the same as it was last year. We'd come we'd come here, or we'd have a, a Zoom call, we'd have a meeting with the engineers, and just discuss the general rally in itself. Now this year, we have one extra thing to discuss, which is the hybrid and how we now, think we're going to. I understand use it. the reason that you're here today is to actually work on the car. So what are you doing then? Uh, things just things. Put, putting bits on. And in is case this I break is this, them uh, in the is this uh, sort of um, a, a, a personal development program for yourself so you've got more idea of what to do in the event of things going wrong or is it something you want to do or is it part of your contract that um, you don't get bits unless you put them on yourself like? no i think malcolm was always uh, keen from when i was back in r5 that every driver at wrc2 level and wrc level should know how to fix the car uh, so uh, i didn't really get many opportunities uh, end of last year and before monty because of the reason that everyone it was so tight for time and really i was just going to slow the guys down if i was here so now that things have calmed down a little bit i've got the opportunity to uh, to help the guys like today i'll be working with the helping build up the uh, the test car and it just gives you the knowledge where if something does go wrong on a stage you know how to fix it you don't need to ask the questions and the minutes and seconds that we don't have sometimes on road sections, so that makes the difference. And I, between I heard on Monty you actually had to use a ratchet strap to repair your car, a good old ratchet strap. Yeah. Was it a zip tie or a ratchet strap? There were, I think there was multiple things. Multiple things. So the, those skills you were learned here are valuable in... in, in yeah, I'm uh, not taking the credit for that one. I called and said, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And thankfully I had the know-how to do it, but uh, oh, the, uh, the intuition on that one failed me. So you're looking forward, looking forward Moving forward, are you looking forward to going to Sweden or are you uh, sort of, is it a little bit of an intrepidation? No, no, we're looking forward to it. Uh, like I said, I had more experience of the car on, on gravel, uh, so, and I was very pleased with the car, the way, uh, way it felt. So uh, I think we'll be as, uh, as competitive for sure. Uh, but again, you don't really know how competitive until you, uh, until you do the first couple of stages. Well, congratulations. Great results. What were your fifth? Fifth, yeah. And, and a stage win as well. So. That's one of them big boxes in life ticked. Yeah, pesky yeah. Craig took my, uh, my podium, so without the problem, I'll give like him a run for his money. Geth, so we see. I'm all Geth and Robert, so put Ellie. Huh? Yeah. We see anyone in the name spot. That's Preed one. That's two wheel at the other one. Beach, yeah, the Rubatho regeneration of a youth program, yeah? Then why is it put Ellie? I think you know why he's in Evacuee, yeah? Evacuee. They come and kick us, don't they? Funny, but anyway. Is this spell? I'm going down, don't we? Have a going down? No, we're going down. Just go back to us, Lydon. Yeah. No, only one in. No, no, no. The Hiriki of a man. Come on. The Hibon Brussel. The Hibon and Andros Brussel. We see at midnight a coddy and three o'clock in Bora. One of the women we see off. Tom built your own. Just to build your own. Build your own. Petro Ragadi. Are they worth the BD dice, eh? What in? Ah? Brilliant. A low but in the alley. On a dagger, I think, Korea. No, I think it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. Be either Meister Low Bell. Fashion Japa, that. No, brilliant, isn't it? Just absolute legend. Is it something about a report of a. I think it's a good one. 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 It's a Get in and drive. Yeah. So this is. But who's done that? Right job. Right, how are they team really, didn't they? Yeah. 
Og for at sige nævnt, nævnt gearbox, nævnt det, nævnt hun, nævnt Lars, sådan en vej. Dimmen pro, ja, så. Og så nævnt dimmen. 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 Det går på kalla armband så att jag nåväl. Så man har pett var armband i bobbing kar. I bobbing kar. Så vi tycker att vi kan tycka att det är pett var kar. Tycker att vi kan 16 bobbar och vi tycker att vi kan. Nej. Tre kar så den nominerar den i points. Ja. Så tycker att vi kan 12. Ja. En en. Så är väl så han den i nöjde flexa service och nås man tidigare gör någonting som kallar tycker att det är kärlek. Att be ut i nöjd. Vet du det speciella till? Pizza. Ja, det är front left on det. Front left suspension. Det är nån, ja. Så, och när jag inte vill ha var det nivå i dron, så var det. Ja, så det är inte för det här igen. Ja. Men det är nåt van hint. Det är nåt jag bildar kär var att Sweden. Och det är nåt som man kan bepe. Det är nåt. Ja, det är nåt. Det är nåt bara det. Som som en gynnande kär man är. Nej, som blir den under. Så, som en gynn. Men ja, under en gynn så får man. Som en hybrid system. Man hybrid system. Så box nå. Så ja. Ty kan man både gå vallis och nåt. Vi tar han här så var det nå. Så du har kallat sofistikat. Jag vet inte vad. Oj. Sofistikat. Sofistikat. Så du fick det. Oj. Oj. Väl, det är en ny kurs då. Då är det. Då två dagar kurs. Två dagar kurs. Boring. Så en en ny sport för henne. Och jag ska spela fiesta b. Jag menar det är rally two. Man har rally three och då är det fiesta mycket vänt. Och det är man har four wheel drives och då. Så tidigt går det att boka det då. Så princip är att man tar vila tidigt. Du är villig att dig då. Och ni går inte till Aron. Och Delvin då? Åh. Och Delvin, nej, och Delvin blir den nå. Och när du går över chansen att vinna mig, vet jag. Och sen kommer jag. Du är villig att inte tre nåt som är skjut och som är. Och kan du inte gå någon annan än jag? Build your R5s. R5s där sitter man. Man har två så kan du build your en Poland då. Poland ja. Så det är en well drive. Nej. Tid i båda bentlista. Då vi sen när vi får en sån bentlista. Bent det blir inte mer en bentli. Det är normalt. Hä? Det är normalt. Tab mouth, tab mouth. Ja. Hä? Var du nu konstant i nöjd vad tycker du? Ja ja. Han den är rally väl är vad tycker du just den? Ja men Karl att han är kommande. Karl som gick in i en bit. Så. Det var hon på Bauer, den går i fjolen om att tjäna. Vi fann med endurance racing där. Jag tror nog så betyder det en god fan. Oj, Spa 24. Gud, fantastisk. Vet du, Peth Moja, vart är det mun här? Nej, det går inte med en M-spot. Vet du, det är special, det är special. Och så är det med en av en tent av Dave Blanet. Vi ser inte att det är någon special. 2014, vi ser vad Kubitsa. Vad var Kubitsa? Och hon är en brilliant. Och så boys i vän kan äta en jobb. Att de har en jobb i Bayvank, nej, att de har en jobb om Bowid. I det här fallet, så att vi du är med och har en jobb Bowid tycker jag. Att jag är hundvis på dessa nöjder som vi rela. Ja, vi ser att det är minimum garage. Att kurda på Bowelloba, Oje, Elgin Evans, Avi, ja, 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 well, du har en. Jag tycker att du är en dyr. Hej, great. Jag kommer, jag kommer säga att jag vill säga att jag hittar en bra. So he danced, and we did general rally two and just rally Nessa. You know, Maroon did another rally two. Oh my guess, you want to fit like a car, na? Yeah, yeah. Just wait. I I gotta say, it's a pleasure to come to M Sports. It's like going to an antiques roadshow, I think, because it's fantastically <laughs> decorated here with wonderful furniture. And I bet you never thought when you bought this place and done it all them years ago that. Um, you know, it's been such a success. It's a great facility. Ah, it's an incredible facility now, especially that we've got the test track. That no, looks fantastic. That's the new era. That's the next, yeah, that's the next step. I think I've now just about fulfilled it. Basically, we've got no room left on the site now, so that's about as far as we can probably go. But, but as you said, you know, it's, it's all how about much, the people. How much is in the hybrid motor of Malcolm Wilson then? Where are you, uh, you know, I mean, you showed me some magazine, they're saying you're too old, like, so what's, the, <laughs> what's your response to well, that, I'm, like? I'm retiring age, so I've got to Does it mean I'm, anything? I've, uh, no, I'm still, I have to say, I'm still... still how much of a buzz did this give you? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, you can see by how emotional I got in Monte yeah. Carlo. I just, you know, it's my life. It's, yeah. be, it's been my life, and, but to... Um, to get that sort of result, and yeah, there's still, still a lot burning inside. Fantastic.